When you hear the word NAS, you probably think of boring tech stuff, right? But trust me, the Terramaster F4 44 Max is anything but boring. I've had this unit for about a month now and I can honestly say that this thing is way cooler than expected. I've packed mine with 81TB of storage and whether you're managing terabytes of data, streaming your own media, or diving into virtual machines, this compact powerhouse might just be your new favorite gadget. So let me show you why and so without taking much of your time, yo guys, let's get started. Right out the box, this NAS makes a great first impression. It's sleek, minimalist, and surprisingly compact, similar to the 4 bay NASes from Synology. The front panel here keeps things clean with five tiny LEDs, one for the power and four for the drives. But the real genius is in the details. Underneath, there are four silicone pads to keep this free from vibrations, so you don't get that annoying hard drive home that drives people crazy. Slide the cover off and this design is well thought out. Inside you get the RAM slots that support up to 64 gigs, although it ships with 8 gigs of RAM, which is plenty for most users. There are also two hidden M.2 SSD slots. Whether you use this slot for blazing fast storage or as a cache for your mechanical drives, it's like having a secret server button on this device. You get the power button at the top left corner of this device, keeping the front clean. Then there's the connectivity. You have two 10 GBE ports, which means you can hit crazy fast transfer speed with this device. And that's if you burn them, you're looking at 20 GBE with this NAS unit. To put that in perspective, you could transfer your entire movie collection in just minutes. On top of that, you get two USB type A ports and one type C port and even an HDMI port. While I wish it had USB 4, the speeds you get from these ports are more than enough for most people. This NAS isn't just a pretty face, it's powered by a 10 core Intel i5-1235U processor, the kind of chip that you find in decent laptops. It's got the muscle to handle heavy workloads like running virtual machines, streaming 4K videos, or even serving as a full-on data hub, which I've used it for in the studio. Setting this thing up was just a breeze, the drive just slid into place, no tools required. Even if you're a total newbie to NAS devices, you have this up and running in no time. Also, to put in the NVMe drives, you need to slot them and screw them in place. It's best to also have a heat sink to keep the SSDs cool. The TNAS PC app, which you can download for Mac or Windows computers, makes it even easier. You connect this to your network, open the app, and it automatically finds this device. No messing with IP addresses or complicated setups. Just follow the on-screen instructions and you're good to go. Now, here's a pro tip. If you're installing mechanical drives on this device and M.2 SSDs, set the mechanical drives and SSDs as different volumes. Mixing the two isn't ideal for performance or longevity. That's the route I followed for my configuration as seen. Now let's talk about the performance on this device because that's where the Terramaster F4 424 Max really shows what it can do and what it can't do. I used a 10 gigabits Ethernet network setup for my test here so I could push this NAS to its limits. And the results were interesting. First, I ran a speed test using the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. For comparison, my custom-built TrueNAS server consistently hits 450 megabytes per second write and 1024 megabytes per second read speed, almost saturating the 10 gigabit Ethernet connection for the reads. When testing the Terramasa HTD setup, I got 450 megabytes per second write and 540 megabytes per second read speed. That's decent but not groundbreaking. However, when I switched to the NVMe drives on this device, the speeds jumped up to impressive 950 megabytes per second write and 900 megabytes per second read speed, which almost saturated the connection speeds at 1250 megabytes per second. Of course, that's expected for a fast NVMe drive. But when I decided to try Terramaster's caching feature with the NVMe drives, on paper, caching should supercharge performance by leveraging the SSDs as temporary storage, but in reality, it was underwhelming. Using the balanced cache mode, I got worse results. 380 megabytes per second write and 310 megabytes per second read speed. Switching to read write mode for the caching, which is riskier cache methods since the data writes to the SSD and pushes to the HDD later. It showed only marginal improvement at 454 megabytes per second write and 333 megabytes per second read speed. Not great for something designed to speed things up. Now, I know I must have done something wrong with the configuration. Maybe I could have done a restart or something, but considering I wasn't going to use this in caching mode, it's just a backup device, I actually didn't bother and went back to configuring the NVMe drives or volume, which was more important to me as a storage drive. So don't take my caching test for gospel. Now let's discuss real world performance because benchmarks are one thing, but how a NAS handles actual tasks is where the rubber meets the road. I started by writing a 4.3 gigabyte file to various storage setups to see how it stacks up. My true NAS server took about 12.67 seconds, which is respectable. 
The Terra Master here using the HDD setup surprised me by beating that with a time of 10.43 seconds. But switching to the NVMe setup on this device was like shifting into overdrive, writing the same file in just 5.5 seconds, which is half of what we got with the HDD here and less than half of what I got on my Truna server. Now reading the same file back was just as revealing. Pulling the same file from my Truna server into my Mac Mini took about 4.8 seconds. Now the Terramaster HDD setup here did that at a slower 8.25 seconds. But again, the NVMe configuration proved its worth matching the TrueNAS read times at an impressive 4.2 seconds. These numbers really show how much the TerraMaster benefits from leveraging NVMe storage. If speed is your priority, using the NVMe for your most active data is absolutely the way to go. Even as HDD performance was respectable, especially compared to my $6,000 custom server setup. As you can see, this NAS is more than capable of keeping up with the task like transferring large files or streaming high resolution media, especially if you optimize the NVMe storage on this NAS. For those who don't know TOS, it's TerraMaster's operating system, which has been super improved. I was able to use the App Center to install apps like Plex Media Server to serve my videos and also the Docker engine on here to run my Docker containers. I mean, those work with no glitch on this NAS. Now, here are the things I love about this device. There is a lot to love about the F4 424 Max. The compact design, tool-less drive installation, and flexible trade or T-RAID system are just the beginning. The power efficiency is another huge win. It uses about 35 watts under full load. Now, you know you have to consider the hard drives. Those will take about 10 watts each. I also love how quiet this device is. Those silicone pads and the 40 mm exhaust fan work together to keep noise levels down even when the driver spins away. It's perfect for an office or home studio setup where noise can distract. Of course, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. At $900, this NAS is an investment and that's without any drives. If you're building out a full setup, you must budget for that. For instance, I had to buy 420TB drives and two 500GB NVMe drives. Those alone cost over $1,200, which adds up to over $2,000 in my case here. Another thing, the memory is non-ECC or error correcting memory. Now, this wouldn't matter for most people, but if you're serious about data integrity, it's something to keep in mind. Our custom server has that, but this is just a backup for us. And while I wish we had USB 4 support on this device, I can see why TerraMaster left it out to keep costs down. So after using the TerraMaster F4 424 Max, I'm seriously impressed. It's more than just a storage device, it's a tiny data center that can handle everything from media streaming to virtual machines. The flexible storage options, decent speeds, and energy efficiency make it a no-brainer for anyone looking to level up their storage game. So what do you love about this NAS? Let me know in the comment section below, I'll be reading. Thanks for watching, and until next time, Kuwi that day.